And the beauty about intellectual property rights is that in many instances, the revenue stream goes on beyond the life of the enterprise or the individual. Sometimes by 20 years, sometimes even as long as 50 years, as Bob Marley's estate has learned to occur. Similarly, the value of research and development. Many of you as small entrepreneurs may want to be able to engage in aspects of research and development, but simply don't have the pockets to be able to do so. And if within a sector, alliances can be made with universities and activities that they have the particular expertise, or other entities outside of our shores, given the ease of movement of information and persons in the world in which we live today. And I believe that the SBA is a perfect universe to make those kinds of alliances, simply because if you call up your correspondent entity in another country, you are more likely to get a list of available support companies than if a small entrepreneur tries to do it on their own. Nobody's likely to take them on in the same way. Similarly, the use of ICT in websites, and I know that the SBA is already going down that line. But let's ask ourselves a question, both in government and in the private sector. Most of Barbados uses information and communication technology for email, communication, for story records, um, calls and games. <laughs> <laughs> but how many use it to effectively market and provide online sales and a large part of the problem I know you will tell me is the absence of the e-commerce regulatory framework as well as the eagerness of the commercial banks to be able to operate and to have a user-friendly environment that allows for the sale of products. It is happening more. You are now seeing elements of mobile banking, you are seeing elements of internet banking, but the truth is that the level of acceptance among small entrepreneurs as of this mechanism as a primary mechanism for sale of services in particular, and in some instances, is absolutely critical if you are going to be proud over other competitors in other jurisdictions. The internet removes the handicap of geography and size. And those hitherto have been two of our major handicaps as a country. We need to be able to make it work for us. So let me show you that, and like that, we are going to have to see an expansion of educational institutions offering a range of tertiary um, education training across the board, not just in business, but in technical areas, if we are going to further enhance the quality of our population, which still now suffers from the fact that only 35 or 36 percent of our population benefit from tertiary education. We need to double those numbers in the next decade if we are to offset the development challenges that we face. And you as small businesses need us to do it more than ever because of the large extent which you rely on human resources in order to develop your business. <laughs> but in addition to that, you have to be ready to address some fundamental changes. And as much as we may talk about it, you and me, because I consider myself a small entrepreneur in this respect, have to open our minds up to new ideas and new business models if we are going to make the adjustment that is being thrust upon us not only by the decline in our real economy, but by the ch and not only by the limited fiscal space which our government has, but equally because of the changes in our environmental <coughs> model which are being thrust upon us. We can no longer rely on reciprocal on um, preferential access to markets. We no longer have the benefit of quotas and subsidies in the way that previous generations of Barbarians could close their eyes and count on. And we are fighting for our lives to maintain the right to give fiscal incentives, which has been one of the primary instruments to drive tourism and manufacturing in our development. Fortunately, we have had the experience of over 25 years 
a business, international business and financial services sector, which is now the second largest sector in our economy, and accounts for two thirds of our corporation taxes, and which does not rest on fiscal incentives in the same and subsidies in the same way that agriculture, manufacturing, and tourism have developed. Fortunately, we have in our future the spectacle of an energy driven sector that was developed particularly as a result of our successful arbitration with Trinidad and Tobago, but which is yet to see the light of day and which will lead to multiple opportunities in the global value chain in our future. But we are not yet at that point. Okay. That innovation is not creativity, but it is the commercialization of creativity. Creativity abounds in this region. We have Nobel laureates, we have Calisonians, we have cricketers who have their own flair, we have creativity from the man in the street who will tell you a few choice words in a way that brings up, <laughs> <laughs> brings up um, metaphors that you would never dream that you could put together. But how do we bottle that? How do we commercialize that? And one of the things that struck me when I was Minister of Education is that the very same child who is created on the outside who is creative in the playing field, who is creative in even the dance hall, on the, um, as an athlete. Once they enter the classroom, once they enter the workplace, once they enter the church, that creativity disappears. And we as a nation have to ask ourselves, what is it about us and our systems and our institutions that does not value the enhancement and the utilization of creativity in the productive things that we do. And how can we change that mindset? How can we as a people recognize that our competitive advantage will not come from producing clothes because you can produce clothes cheaper in China. You can produce clothes cheaper in Costa Rica. Our competitive advantage will not come from producing furniture. You can produce furniture cheaper in China and Ghana. But what are the things that will give us that distinctive edge that causes people to want to pay that extra value that is necessary? I speak to you against the background that in the last three years, our firms in Barbados as a whole, small, medium, and large firms, have recorded a reduction in their savings to the tune of about $230 million, reflecting a reliance on retained earnings in order for businesses to stay afloat. I speak to you against the background of what can only be described as a virtual collapse in investment in Barbados, with gross capital formation, investment in buildings, machinery, plants, dropping by almost 30% between 2007 and 2009 from a high of $1.57 billion to $1.16 billion. And we do not yet have full 2010 figures. So this background, when added to the reality of government's tight fiscal situation, which at one level means reduced options for policy support to the productive sector and the business sector, but at the same time, tight liquidity, thereby affecting many of the members of this association's ability to be able to pay in a timely manner and to be able to reduce the level of financial charges that they incur as a result of their payments is a matter of great concern for us. And hence, the topic sustain small and medium-sized enterprises in 2011 and beyond. The truth is that we all know that it is easier to be able to have you return to growth than it will be for you to start afresh new enterprises. Because new enterprises take on average three years 
before they sign their fee. And if therefore enterprises are allowed to collapse in this environment, the process of having a range of enterprises capable of supporting our growth and our quality of life is going to be that much more difficult if we allow enterprises to collapse at this stage. So the job is to keep your head above the water. Many of you may not know, but Grace Kennedy does not manufacture much of what it markets and distributes. What Grace has perfected is the art of being able to have a range of suppliers coming under common processes and common brands to be able to distribute and market such that not only in the Caribbean, but in the diaspora, their brand has gained acceptance and it has been easier to move the distribution of their product across a range of enterprises, supermarkets, other distribution channels, not just in the traditional North Atlantic market, but indeed as far away as Australia and Asia as a result of being able to have that sense. We have among us entities such as Farmers Choice, and I defy anyone to tell you what better day to in the world. Similarly with my call, I defy anybody to tell me what better day to in ice cream. But it is true on drum first in the industry. But the point is that we need to use our established brand to be able to lead the way while expanding production not by looking only at investment within that particular enterprise but creating synergistic relationships that allow for the expansion of production to support that brand. At the end of the day, Barbados is a dot. Our share in the trade of global goods is 0.000%. Our share in the trade of global services is 0.001%. And unless we realize that we need to pool both to reduce our cost and enhance our profitability, but at the same time enhance our competitiveness to admit a further penetration, we will not be able to make the transitions that are necessary and to see sectors and enterprises succeed in the absence of the tools available previously to generations of Barbadians. And in those days, before it was run up to kill devil, they also think of something that we learned by experience. <laughs> but Ron was spelled R-H-U-S. And those who are connoisseurs of Ron know that Barbados has a special place in the history of the development of rum. But yet our rum industry is a $67 million industry. When in truth and in fact, we should be seeking to track a billion dollar rum industry in the next decade. And how can we achieve that? Is it going to come purely from Monkey and West Indies rum refineries and four square alone? Or can they expand in such a way to us to incorporate many, 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 many more small entrepreneurs from the agricultural sector right back to, to the end of the value chain that allows us to treat this as our major national export as a good. China has a hundred million people in its middle class and the numbers are growing rapidly each year. And the Chinese who have gone into the middle class, they're starting to go to Europe, they're drinking whiskey, they're drinking brandy, but like everyone else, that's where they start. And then they realize, well, we've been doing this for a while. Let's do something a little more exotic. That's why we need to get approved destination status for Barbados in the Caribbean countries. Because it's only a matter of time before they start coming here. Rum is already available there, but not in the scale and not with the brands that we would like to see. What are we doing to reposition, recognizing that the effort of those large enterprises to expand will not be sufficient. But the collective effort of the entrepreneurs of Barbados and the government of Barbados can carry us closer to that point. Similarly, apart from rum and sea island cotton, and let me say on sea island cotton, one of the things that I believe strongly is that 50% of our output of sea island cotton should be marketed to top designers in the world, as we were trying to do just before we lost government. 
and the other 50% available to local designers at a reduced cost, recognizing that most of our local designers cannot afford to be able to compete at that level. But if you have a global product, charge a global premium, and then reserve to your people access to the product at a cheaper level, such that we can now compete, because what we are showing is in fact a product in demand in the rest of the world.